Gemma 3N is Google's attempt at building an open model that is targeted towards mobile devices. Hey everyone, my name is Vladimir, and in this video we're going to have a look at Gemma 3N, the new open model by Google, and we're going to have a look at how you can load this model into the Transformers library. We're going to be using a Google Cloud Notebook with support for GPU, and I'm going to show you how you can give this model input of text, images, and at the end, I'm going to show you how you can even give it a video and see how this model performs compared to its size. Let's get started. If you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro. There you can find a complete AI engineer bootcamp that will help you get started with Python, classical statistics and machine learning methods. Then you're going to deploy a complete machine learning pipeline to the cloud. Then you're going to learn about LMs, how you can use them with one chain, land graph, both open, free and local models and cloud models. Then you're going to go through fine-tuning models, building Arax and Cax, and finally going to go through AI agents and agentic workflows. So if you want to become a better AI engineer today, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro. Thank you. Part of the innovation of Gemma 3N is that this model is actually multimodal by design. What this means is that you can give input as images, audio, video, and text. The model itself only supports text outputs. And this model in particular is using effective parameters. Uh, this is somewhat of a marketing term. So they're saying that the models of, of Gemma 3N are actually effectively using only 2 and 4 billion parameters models uh, respectively. But in reality, their raw parameter count, as they're calling it, are 5 billion and 8 billion respectively. Another important change from Gemma 3 is the use of the Matformer or the Matryoshka Transformer. So here they're specifying that this is a novel nested transformer built for elastic inference. Think of it as Matryoshka dolls. A larger model contains small, funky, functional versions of itself. And here they have a nice diagram to explain how the different blocks can, can be skipped for smaller and larger models. Of course, the smaller model you would expect to give you slightly less performant responses and the larger one should probably be the better one. The model weights are already available on hugging face models and you can see here that the model that we're going to be using is the effective 4 billion parameter model or 8 billion parameter and you can see that this is the instruction tuned model the base models are also provided so you can try and use those on your own. I am in my local cursor instance and as you can see running this model I used a NVIDIA L4 GPU. This had uh, roughly 24 gigabytes of VRAM and when I loaded the model the four effective 4 billion parameter model uh, you can see that the GPU RAM was roughly 19 gigabytes of VRAM. So uh, this took some uh, GPU memory in order to uh, work through that. So the dependencies that I'm going to be using are pretty much the latest version of the team library. This is going to be including the Vision Transformer and the Transformers library. The Transformers library now has official support for the Gemma 3N. And for the video processing, I'm going to be using the Pi AV library in order to convert the video uh, file into different PU images. So here are the imports as I have already told you the Transformers library with auto processor and the Gemma 3 N for conditional generation. So in order to load this model you need to specify the model ID, give it to the from tree trained method, uh, get device map to auto if you want to put the model on the GPU and then I'm going to be using Ford 16 and then I'm going to be loading the processor that is going to be formatting and uh, processing the data from the text images etc. So as you can see here uh, it is loading the chat template and other information from the model itself. 
So I'll have this helper function to print the responses. And this is how you can do inference for this model. You essentially get a list of messages. I'm going to show you in a bit how you can format those. Then you're going to be using the apply chat template on the processor. Then you're going to be adding the add generation prompt. Uh, ask the processor to tokenize the model, uh, the input of the messages, uh, return a dictionary, and this is going to be using the return tensors of PyTorch. And I'm going to be putting the inputs on the device. In this case, this is going to be the GPU. So uh, I'm going to be also calculating the input length. This is pretty much taken exactly from the Huey Face repository for the geometry and model. And I'm going to be calling the model.generate. Uh, here I'm specifying a hard limit of 140 tokens when generating the uh, output. Uh, note that we're using inference mode. This should somewhat speed up the inference of the model. And then I'm going to be using the first generation since we're going to be doing only one generation and from that generation which are going to be the token ids i'm going to be using the processor.decode to give us a final string with skipping the special tokens that the generation has given us so let's see how you can do this in practice i will have this system message that is going to be used throughout every example so uh, this system message is going to just be saying you are a helpful assistant, nothing uh, crazy about that. So hi, what is your name? This is going to be just a prediction for text input. And as you can see, this took uh, roughly 2.3 seconds on this GPU. And uh, you can see here that I'm printing the response. And uh, the response is hello, I'm Gemma, a large language model created by Gemma team at Google DeepMind. I'm an open await AI assistant. It's nice to meet you open await, but not so open in how this model was trained, I would say. So uh, let's see how good this model is when it comes to images. Here uh, you can see that I have image of three different people. Those guys are uh, let's say somewhat famous in, in the country that I live in and uh, I would say that the image is a bit blurry so uh, let's see if Gemma is going to be able to understand the, what this image is about. So here is the text that I'm giving it or the prompt how many people on the image describe their gender sort them by height of course uh, this is very important I just wanted to check how uh, let's say robotomized this model actually is compared to something like Wama or the other, uh, let's say, non very realistic models. So you can see here that this took roughly five seconds to complete, even though I have passed the image uh, as well. So here is the result. There are three people in the image, so this is correct. Based on their appearance, all three individuals appear to be male. Okay, great. Sort them by height from tallest to shortest based on visual estimation. The person at the top appears to be the tallest. The person in the middle is slightly shorter than the top person. Okay, so he got this one completely wrong. Of course, uh, with some clever prompting, you might get better results. But I just wanted to show you that, uh, of course, this 4 billion parameter model shouldn't be the craziest model that you can work with. Next, I am going to give it this page of the NVIDIA earnings results. Uh, here we have a lot of, uh, let's say, complex information, including financial uh, information, tables with uh, different, let's say, somewhat complex columns and rows. So here I'm passing in the image that you've seen. And uh, I said, give one to two sentence summary of what is on the image. How much is the diluted earnings per share for Q1 FY26 within the gap format? So the real number here is 76 cents. Uh, this is the figure that I wanted this model to give me. Uh, let's see what happens in the response. Note that th this for some reason took a minute and 20 seconds, which is quite a lot. The image contains financial statements for ADWIA, 
yeah, that's crazy for the fiscal year of 25. So this is okay. Specifically showing the results for the first quarter Q1 FY26. It presents a detailed breakdown of revenues, expenses and earnings um, under gap and non gap accounting methods. Okay. So um, I'm not really sure why it got this part incorrectly. The diluted earnings per share in gap format is 80 cents. Of course, this is incorrect, but I would say that it is quite all right for such a small model. Of course, probably something like Coin 2.5 VL would probably give us a better result, but uh, it's okay for now. So this is the next image that I'm passing this model. Um, uh, probably some of you know what this is and uh, I'm going to be asking what engine is this? What is the displacement and horsepower of the engine that is? So uh, in this case, we got uh, roughly again a minute and 20 seconds to complete the response even on this GPU. I haven't tried to batch the results, but uh, in this case, uh, it just didn't really matter. Based on the image, this uh, Mercedes AMG M 156 V8 engine, which is exactly correct. Here's what I can tell you for the displacement and horsepower. M156 has a displacement of 6.2 liters, which is uh, correct. The horsepower varies depending on the specific model and year, which again is correct. And it is uh, giving us a range from 451 to 503. In some cases, uh, actually this engine has produced even more power than the figures provided here in the C63 MG. The MG badging and overall design, etc. etc. Okay, so it uh, got this one extremely correctly, which I'm uh, very pleasantly surprised with. So the next one is going to be a video, uh, and I'm going to be adding and uh, getting just seven frames of the video. Let me show you what the video is about. Okay, so here is the video. And I have loaded the video using the Pi AV library, and this can take each frame as a PU image. So in this case, I'm using the frame to image method and rotating the images since uh, in this case, those were actually rotated to 90 degrees. And uh, in our case, I'm taking just the 20 uh, each frame for 20 uh, frames. So I only go, I'm going to be passing just seven frames to the model. And here is a sample frame that the model is going to get. So in order to pass in those frames, I'm going to be working with all of the frames except the first one, since this was a black one. And it appears that the black one has actually uh, made the model uh, predict incorrectly based on the information of the images. So I'm essentially passing in a list of images as a frame. So in this case, I'm passing just six images. So uh, in your case, you might uh, work with more images and give it a bit more. Here's what appears to be happening in the images. The images show a person on a motorcycle attempting to perform a wheelie. A motorcycle is the center of focus in all the images. The motorcycle is tilted back with the front wheel lifted off the ground. This is a maneuver known as a wheelie. A person is riding the motorcycle and appears to be controlling the wheelie. Okay, so I wouldn't say that from the video it appears that we are getting a wheelie on this motorcycle, but uh, given that we are just passing in six images and um, this might not be the best way to pass this information to the model, I would say that it got most of the information correctly, except for the wheelie, of course. So this is it for this video. We've seen how you can load the Gemma 3 N model, how you can use it for text, images and video. We've seen that this model is performing relatively well for its size. It doesn't seem to be anything uh, like a breakthrough, at least from what I'm seeing. I would say that the Quen 3 models and the Quen 2.5 VO models are probably performing a bit better. Of course, on textual tasks, I haven't really tested this model. And the thing with the effective parameters seems to be a bit misleading since most of the people are thinking that these are the numbers of real parameters that the model is going to be loading every time within your GPU. Thank you for watching, guys. 
please like, share and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. If you want to become a better AI engineer today, go and subscribe to MLExpert Pro and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.